Hey everybody, how you guys doing out there? I'm Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and I would like to say, how you doing? How you guys holding up there? This is all cool. I am back. We are doing the game gallery. Now, this show is the show where we talk about gaming specifically. Okay, we're going to be talking about the types of games that are out there. Going to give you guys, I'm going to try and give you guys like a recommendation a week. Um, and doing everything I can to make sure that the community grows and everyone is happy and everything is cool and great. And oh my God, did we start on time again? Oh, that is actually pretty awesome. But I actually did something that I didn't plan on doing. So I need to hit my dashboard real quick because I did everything I could, everything I could to make sure that everything was working great and all of a sudden ah, and I didn't um I didn't silence my phone and of course um um how can I put this do 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 um I didn't change the name of the show but that's fine because right now um it's not a problem. I'm just changing that up real quick. This is the game gallery. I love the future. <clears throat> yeah, I love the future. There we go. And that should be a thing. So, um, so like I said, how you guys doing out there? Um, boy, it is. I'm a little bit tired today not gonna lie I'm just a little bit um, not quite worn out if you will but yeah yeah tired enough but yeah I am here to talk to you guys about quite a few things today well not quite a few but enough just just enough you know a, a few things that we're gonna be talking about today um, again this is the show where we talk about games and I know my voice is so quiet it's so soothing and uh, looks like I'm having a little bit of a... All right, that's better. That is a lot better. So, <clears throat> as I was saying, today we're talking about games. Whole lot of, whole lot of games. However, we're only talking about the concepts of... Well, we're talking about a big concept, and that is going to be a little bit to talk about today. Um, today we are going to be talking about role-playing games, why and the idea of skinning and no I don't mean what you do when you fall on the ground and you look at your knee and a little bit and a little bit of a boo-boo's there that's not what I'm looking for I am looking f for mm, ah there we go ah, a little bit of coffee I am talking today about changing up the genre or the setting of the games that you play in order to fit more of a taste or style if you will because um there's a lot of things about games that turn people off and or i'm not even going to say turn people off but when i try and talk to a lot of people about the games that i like to play or that i like to teach them it's always something okay it's always well i don't really like fantasy or sci-fi isn't really my thing or i don't like superheroes or i'm and um, occasionally I believe them. And when I do believe them, um, and when I say occasionally I believe them, there's quite a few times where people just aren't interested, but they don't want to say, so they throw a bunch of social cues with believable lies, and it, it's, it, it's just this long sort of thing. But before we get to that, I got to get to a little bit of business real quick. So um, what business am I talking about? Well... There we go. Um, I am talking about how do you guys get a hold of us? Now, today is a Patreon sponsored episode, but we're going to get to that in quite a few. So let's check this out. Pull up a keyboard and magically, mystically type in back in the deck at gmail.com. That's B A C K I N T H E D E C K at gmail.com. Um, go over to our YouTube channel, subscribe to us over there. It would really, really help out to build the community and help me do a lot of this stuff that I'm working on doing. Um, yeah, so check out the YouTube 
check out the YouTube channel over there. We've got loads and loads and loads of stuff. It looks like we have a few things, but I'm still learning how to put that stuff together. Let me just, uh, oh yeah, how's that? Boom. Yeah, look at that there, right there. Um, yeah, that's where we're going on that. Yeah, look at all these videos, all these videos for your consumption. And, um, yeah, that would be something that would be really cool for you guys to do. Also, hit us up on our social media at Twitter. That's uh, Twitter at BID underscore P. Um, Instagram at BID underscore P. If you were part of that wretched hive of scum and villainy that we call Facebook, and a lot of us are, let's, let's, you know, you ain't got a lot of kick it. Um, <laughs> then head on over to Deckers on the Book on Facebook. Join the group. Um, you get to see a lot of the stuff that we talk about and all that jazz. whole lot of videos of me and all that stuff. And I get it. If you guys don't like my face, I'm with that because sometimes I can look just a little wacky. Um, but in that case, head on over to soundcloud.com slash BID underscore P and check out our archive where we've got at least seven years of back history archives that you guys can download for free forever just head on over to soundcloud.com slash bid underscore p so that is what we're talking about and that will be the thing that we are working on today so yeah check that out anyway so i wanted to talk to you guys today about something really really awesome to me um and that is skinning games. But before I get to the skinning of the games and all that jazz, I wanted to let you guys know that with the Patreon thing that I've been talking about, um, we've got perks at certain levels. And um, one of the levels, um, you know, at, um, at the queen level of patronage, you guys can literally let me know to teach you guys a game and um that's what we're going to be doing today because of our queen patron um shannon boom lay she's been part of the queen um the queen tier for quite a few months now and believe me it is very much appreciated at the higher tiers um there's a few other things but if you guys can't afford to do that kind of thing i totally understand here i've got oh look at that that just happens to be the prototype for the back in the deck keychain that deckers get at the five dollar tier and at the five dollar tier you guys get one of those at the ten dollar and up tier you guys will be getting a miniature of yours truly we've been working on that and those are some of the things that we have been working on here and that is some really cool stuff but i want to talk about games today okay and a lot of the games that i want to talk about hmm, i could have sworn i put my pictures in this folder oh look I did and it looks like it's just being a little weird okay no problem no problem whatsoever um let's check out there hey 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 that is good that is some good stuff yeah um I want to talk about today um the d20 system all right now this might be a little intimidating because you know new lexicon new all that stuff but um today we're gonna crack through that okay the d20 system is essentially dungeons and dragons all right but there was a very cool thing that happened in the year 2000 and it being 2020 um i figure it would be a good time to go over what happened and what the effects were of what happened and how it turned gaming into something even more awesome than it always has been okay um back in 2000 dungeons and dragons released its third edition rule book and that is here we go the third edition player's handbook now this handbook was the third edition of dungeons and dragons and it streamlined the old 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 system of Dungeons and Dragons 2.0 and what they did with this back in 2000 
was they said, okay, we've got a new system. It's working for Dungeons and Dragons. And um, one of the things that we would like for it to do is really be applied to a few other things. So we are gonna open up the gaming license. Now, if you guys play video games out there, you guys know that video game companies do this all the time. They sell their engine to other companies. So you get companies using, say, the Fallout engine or the Unreal engine or the, um, the Portal engine, okay? And the D20 system, is essentially just that it is if you will um the system yeah there we go it is the system that we use to run a tabletop role-playing game hang on i'm checking something look i'm cut ah anyway <laughs> um yeah <laughs> Yeah, I had to run a little joke there because, like I said, I'm trying to keep my energy up. Anyway, um, so the whole principle was once you learn how to play Dungeons & Dragons, you just buy the player's handbook, possibly the Dungeon Master's Guide, as seen here, and then you can apply those same rules to a bunch of other genres, okay? And this is this was a revolutionary concept it really was because as soon as you get into games where you can create your own scenarios and stuff it never fails that we start to try and add our own stuff um if you play a game like risk you know um and you've got the horsemen and the cattlemen there's been somebody out there that's like well i wonder what would happen if i tried to add um burst fire guns or tanks yeah tanks to risk you know try and modernize it um and one of my things about skinning is as you guys know i'm not a big fan of fantasy that is not my favorite genre that is not one of the things that i like being out there primarily because it's based in medieval england and though the game mechanics of most medieval games don't flat out say if you have dark skin you got to play a slave but because i live in the united states if the other players i play with don't believe that outright then there is just a little bit just a little bit of expectation if you will um like a little bit of a subconscious you know, a subconscious behavioral tick that as long as we're saying, my lord, my lady, blah, 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 yes, oh, pretty thee, yeah, pretty thee, my knuckle. Um, if we go into those things, that other little thing that happens if a person of color or an LGBT person comes out, it's not as bad as when it comes to women, but it's bad, you know? I mean, uh, there's always those people out there that are like, yes, pretty the wench, bring me this. And it's like, did you just call me? A no, 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 no. It's just how they talked back then is something that I've heard hundreds of times over the course of my gaming, um, over the course of my gaming life. So how do I take away that historical context, but still play this game that is very cool? Um, and it's in its concept, you know, how, how do I write stories um, and do this interacting role playing and storytelling experience for my friends and myself? And the answer is skin it. I just I take those mechanics. I take rolling those dice. I take the monsters and the spells and all that stuff and I rip it all up. And then I plop it down in a different timeline or a different genre or a different um um, a different setting, you know, um, is it possible to play D and D where all the characters <clears throat> are actually in Wakanda? Well, if you know enough about Wakanda, yes, that is the big thing. Um, one of the things I get from players that I know or people that I know, especially people around where I grew up is, well, I don't know about all that fantasy stuff, man, blah, blah, blah. Hey, you know, can I play a gangster rapper? And I'm like, you know, 
if I run a game that's set in D20 Modern, and I give you the Bard class, yeah, I don't see why, I don't see why not. I don't see why you couldn't do that. And the type of, you know, that kind of house ruling, that kind of, this is what you want to be, how can I cram it into this system? Um, without playing that, well, you're from foreign land, so I'm going to throw you in jail the moment you get off the boat to this country. You know, that, that kind of thing. Um, the whole thing of skinning started as house rules, okay? And once the year 2000 came along, again, um, Wizards of the Coast created the open gaming license for Dungeons & Dragons, and what they did was something revolutionary and a little bit brilliant which was once they opened the open or once they put the open gaming license out there they would charge a very small fee to use um to use a d20 you know their d20 system and then any company anywhere could write a game that was using that mechanics but set in their own worlds separate from dungeons and dragons so you didn't have to necessarily play Dungeons and Dragons if you didn't want to you could play Fallout or um, Game of Thrones <clears throat> you know um, you could play a lot of different games um, as I said um, I was a big fan of D20 Modern which was D&D &D with the same races and all that stuff but it was set in the early 2000s <clears throat> I do that for one reason um, full disclosure, as a dungeon master, I hate, hate writing maps. And way, way back in my jobs, you know, way, way back in my day, long, long time ago, we had these things called Thomas Guides. And they were, uh, <clears throat> they were these books about yay thick, yay thick, about three inches thick, that had maps of the whole county that you lived in and it was arranged by a gridded system so i could turn to a random page where i could think wait a minute i know that area myself because i know los angeles very well so i can pull out a thomas guide and i can say okay here is the map to where you guys are going um and if i wanted to i could throw in vampires or wizards or elves or you know um i could make dwarves um people that are living in the city that run an entire like forgery in the industrial district or i can make the underdark uh the old abandoned subway tunnels from the 1920s you, you, you know what i mean but the rules the core rules the skill sets the the how do you know if you did something roll this die type thing that would stay the same and that was one of the things that um that was really one of the things that skinning really opened up now this is a really big important concept um this is why uh, wizards of the coast um in releasing the stuff for dungeons and dragons they made a lot of different stuff a lot of different stuff now as you guys know there is a particular game that i run that i talk about a lot um <laughs> called esper genesis and um with this game it's serious sci-fi i mean it is hard or it could be hard sci-fi but it's in space they replace all the magic with super science and um there are space rules and and flight combat and all that stuff and i am all about that it allows me to play star trek or star wars mainly star trek um in space and discover new planets and write out new planets and yeah i do hate writing maps but thank god for google um and it allowed us to um it, it's allowing us to have this very similar experience without having to um one without having to deal with the medieval fantasy um you know full disclosure when i was younger i worked at the renaissance fair because of course i did <laughs> and um the one thing that you heard over and over and over when people started getting catty and sniping at each other is that noun is not period 
that's not period. That's not from the Renaissance. That's not from this. That's not from that. And people started taking that to the gaming table a long time ago. Well, you wouldn't see that in, in medieval England. That's not fantasy. That's not this. You know, when at the end of the day, you're talking like a ranger, a wizard, a bard, two fighters, and a cleric going against a dwarven made tank that they forged the steel out of. And, you know, it's it's enchanted with the fireball spell and all that stuff. So they're, go they're going against a panzer. And, you know, a lot of the players would be like, well, that's not period. That's not this. Me, 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 me. And, um, you know, but skinning it with a modern setting or future setting or something like that um really opens up a few things now interesting thing um i think about the fallout ip um because i like the fallout ip as much as i'm not a big fan of post-apocalyptic future but i do think that the um that the people that wrote the role-playing game and the ones who wrote the video games did a really good job flushing out that world. Um, but this brings about a major complication. Um, you know, much like with Game of Thrones. Um, and yes, there is a Star Wars D20 system, which is running a skinned game or skinning a game to a popular fictitious place. Okay. And that we're only going to talk about that for a hot minute, just just a hot minute. because that's a whole nother show in and of itself. But one of the big problems that comes about is when it is a popular IP, the temptation to try and change the plot or use meta knowledge um, is huge. It's really, 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 really big. And by that, I mean this. Um, I have read almost everything that there is on Game of Thrones. Love that set of stories. Love it, love it, love it. Love it, love it. Um, watched every episode of the TV show twice. Watched hundreds of hours of reviews and breakdowns and analysis. And the only reason that I didn't make any videos of my own was because there was nothing I could say that four other people hadn't said already, you know? Um, so if I were to run a Game of Thrones thing with people that have watched the show or other people that have read the books, it would be my job as the GM to make sure that they didn't try and say become more powerful than Tywin Lannister. You know, um, this is one of the things that is huge in Lord of the Rings role playing games where people want to alter the plot of the book and not to say that that's not possible. It's just when there's an IP out there, chances are by the time someone really likes the IP within the confines of a skinned game, especially with D20, the characters you know are practically epic level and you are starting flat out of college. You know, um, like, you know, Star Wars is a great example. Um, we watched Luke Skywalker from beginning to Jedi and then with the last movies that came out and all that stuff, but just with the original trilogy and the temptation of going, I'm a Jedi, I'm a level one, I'm going to go beat up Darth Vader. And if they have stats, they can be killed. But even more to that, a first level character is not going to beat Darth Vader. Re Empire Strikes Back. OK, <laughs> um, you know. It's um, it, it really is one of those things that can cause a lot of tension. So skinning things with that's not period. That's not how it went in the books. And it's like you're not playing those characters. I really saw it with the video game of the Lord of the Rings back in uh, 2002. And it was based on the movies. But you're following the fellowship. So you can't warn them about the Balrog. You can't warn them about the plot points that are coming up and you can't take the ring from Frodo or Sam or whoever had it in, in those points because you were playing someone else in middle earth. So to make it, you know, so I guess to summarize my point, when you're skinning a game, if you want to do it with a popular IP, beware because the things that make the, the characters that make the IP or intellectual property popular, those are the special people. Thus, those are the ones that um, the stories are about. So 
if you want to skin a game and delve into the realm of fan fiction, understand that your characters will want to be just as, if not more special, than the characters that are already in the intellectual property. You, you get me? Um, that's why it's easier to skin tabletop RPGs with video games, you know? Because there's so much going on in Fallout, you don't necessarily have to be the chosen one or the sole survivor or the 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 vault walker or whatever his name was. Um, so there's that. But <clears throat> um, one of one of the games that I wanted to like until I realized I really didn't care about the genre was Spycraft. Um, Spycraft. Um, 2.0 came out in 2005, I believe. And, um, oh yeah, the Vault Dweller. Thank you. Thank you. The, the chat is on it today. <coughs> um, ooh. <clears throat> ah, there we go. Yeah. Um, the Spycraft game back in 2002, 2003 was a D20 game that was put out, I believe... By either AEG or Mongoose. And it was D20 James Bond. Okay. Um, yeah. It, it was very much. You know. James Bond. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And stuff like that. And it's not really my cup of tea. But it's out there for the people who want to play the French Connection. You know. Who want to play characters like Agent Coulson. Um, when, a, when you're skinning a game. I think that it's wisest, I, I think that it's really wisest to take the stuff that you're going to do and set it in a very broad setting. Um, Fallout is good about this because there's so much in that world. Um, heck, the games have only covered Northern California, Northern Nevada, Las Vegas, and the East Coast. So it's easy to get like the um the fallout d20 game and set it in texas or nebraska or colorado you know and that leaves it open so that you can still deal with the ncr and um possibly the roman legions or the enclave or any of that stuff and the same goes with game of thrones um if i were to run a game of thrones skin I would set everything across the narrow sea far away from Westeros or even in South Thorios, like an expedition game, because nobody knows what's down there, which means my players can't. What's the term I'm looking for? My players can't take their knowledge of the material in and let it bleed over into. OK, hang on and let it bleed over into their. um into their characters okay gotta love family <laughs> um so like i said <laughs> um that is one of the things about cheat uh about skinning now my favorite thing to do when i'm reskinning a game especially because i play so many games that never reach the height of popularity thus it doesn't have a really 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 deep bench of supplementary materials is um the easiest way to practice, I guess you can say, practice skinning is with monsters. Monsters and antagonists. I'm a big fan of that. Um, Dungeons and Dragons released cards, okay? Now, this is an Arcana deck. This is all spells. But there's a deck like this for monsters, all right? And <clears throat> what you have are your stat blocks. And in your stat blocks, you also have, uh, well, the stat blocks are, you know, their strength, their dexterity, what spells they know, and it comes with a little picture. Change the picture. <laughs> it's that simple. Just change the picture. So now, the giant troll that has a dexterity of um, 11 and a plus 2 to hit and immunities to everything but vulnerability to fire, well, now that's a robot. <laughs> It's a robot now, or it is, um, it's a plant creature that has various tentacles. You, you, you see what I mean on that? Um, there's nothing that says that just because it's in the book, 
um, the GM has to play it exactly letter for letter, okay? Um, especially when you're skinning. The most important thing is to make sure that you keep your skinning fair and consistent across the board. Um, there is a game out by Joseph McCullough um, called The Rangers of Shadow Deep. And it is an awesome game. It's miniature neutral. I'm a big fan of it. I would pull it up, but it messes with the green spell that I have around here. And it is very fantasy. And the, the scenarios that it paints up um, have a very Norse feel. Yeah, it has a very, like, you know, Scandinavian feel. So there's a lot of Torvadans and, and Hicks and Fergenmergens, you know, and um, I'm not always feeling that. <laughs> I'm not always feeling that. However, I can take those exact same, rule, same rules, the exact same rules, change up the monsters, set it in space, and use my little miniatures of spacemen in power armor and go, you know what? They're not fighting spiders. They're fighting these things, whatever those things are. I'll call them, oh, um, Uzi slime faces, or um, since, I'm, since I'm gonna set stuff in space, they're not flies, exactly. They are mukamakas, you know? And um, as long as I can remember, um, that's what they are. And there's nobody that can tell me different because I made it up. Bah, ha, 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 ha. But as long as I keep with the game mechanics and the um, if you don't have 15 tongues, you can't pronounce it right. Um, as long as they are consistent in the way that they interact with the rest of the game, we're fine. Um, one of the things I really like doing, especially since I'm running Esper Genesis on the Warp Tumblr show, which I'm going to start posting on the Patreon in the next couple of weeks, um, that game has a very small bench of antagonists because it's still new. And Dungeons and Dragons has been out for seven years now, so I can use stuff from the Monster Manual as long as I keep the threat levels the same and all that stuff and I can make them make them outer space creatures and there's no rule that says that you can't like when you're picking up miniatures and stuff you know there's a lot of people out there that would be like but solar I don't know because they don't sell miniature for space stuff yeah I go and sell Dungeons and Dragons or one of my things is but solar the only miniatures I can get is oh no uh, they're from Star Wars and everybody knows what Star Wars stuff is dude go to a toy store <laughs> go to a toy store buy a pack of um a pack of assorted aliens or assorted bug things um let's see around here i have there we go yeah that's it um right here right here is something that i picked up from the dollar store yeah and uh it's a whale <laughs> Okay, look at it. It's a whale. It, woo, it looks like a whale. And it's pink. So all I gotta do is um, put it on a base. Maybe add a spike or two to it. Glue on some toothpicks. Maybe make a little tentacle for it. And it's a space whale. Or it's a, it, it is a flying um, monster that happens to have all the stats of a bugbear. You, know, you see what I mean? Um... Or, you know, I can take two of the cards and say, all right, it's a bugbear in front and an owlbear in back. And yeah, you'll meet its final form. But the people looking at the miniature, they're going to see a whale with spikes and a couple of big beefy arms. You know, I mean, that that's what they're going to see. And this is a place where a lot of the fun in the games can happen because there's nothing that says you can't reskin. Um reskin a game and keep it within the genre you know if you're playing dungeons and dragons and your players know what trolls are and they can come up with a lot of reasons why their characters would know what a troll is cool use a troll stat block but call it something else you know um 
as long as you can describe it as something other than a troll. So, you know, instead of it being a lumbering um, monster thing that kind of looks like an orc, but has the speech patterns of maybe a four year old, you know, make this one covered in hair. Let's make it covered in hair and the hair wiggles like fingers. <laughs> and as it's lumbering toward you, um, it leaves a slimy trail behind it or something. Um, as the DM, it could still be a troll. It could still work just like a troll. <laughs> Has the same stat block of a troll. Y you see what I mean? And the players would have to do all of those things, and they get to have an epic battle against something that they've never seen before, and everybody can have fun. Good times will be had by all. Story, story, story isn't that great. And again, but you know, you know, as the person who's skinning the game, you know it was a troll. But they had fun fighting a troll because they didn't go in with the, oh, this is easy, I totally got this, you know, idea. So, to sum up, <clears throat> reskinning games is a really good way to save money, okay? Um, no lie, guys. The... D&D starter set is good. It's really good. The ultimate starter set is great. But if you're going to get into role playing, just let's just say only with Dungeons and Dragons. That's $150 to start for the monster manual, the player's handbook and the dungeon master's guide. Okay? What I call the three essentials. You know, Xanathar's guide and the other stuff that goes along with it. Those are good. Those are good. And Unearthed Arcana, and you can get a lot of online resources. But if you got those three, you're set for the next 30 years. Because, truth, I still play second edition games when I can. Um, but when you get through that monster manual and you have the same group of players and they know every monster and all that stuff, um, you can reskin the monsters. You know, instead of rats, make them ants. <laughs> you, you, you see what I mean? Um, they're, they're ants that are painted up like yellow jackets and they're going, oh my God, I don't know this or constructs or, you know, um, whatever you describe is a reskinning. And then you can go, well, I want to use the rules of Dungeons and Dragons, but I want to write a Conan type thing where there's less magic or the magic is a softer type of magic. Um, or... You know, in my case, I want to play Dungeons and Dragons, but I want to do it in space with spaceships and dogfighting and lasers and pew pew whoosh whoosh instead of clang clang whoosh whoosh. You know, you, you see what I mean? Um, there are a lot of companies out there that have already done that work for you, and that is awesome. Mongoose Publishing is, uh, they were practically the kings. Um, in the early 2000s of the open gaming license. Between them and AEG, they released 40, 50 different things. Um, I still have the um, open gaming license for 3.5, so that's the old D20 system, um, for Pantheon Wars, you know, where you could literally play a Greek god versus a Roman god versus a Mesopotamian god versus <laughs> an Egyptian god, you know? And I really like that kind of representation. You know, the chat is being real chatty today. Let's uh, let's take a look at these guys real quick. Yeah, yeah, that is, check that out there. Vixen is like, yeah, it keeps players from knowing how to handle every enemy before their characters even faced it. That's exactly it. That is exactly it. Um, you know, and thanks, boom. Thanks, boom. Boom, chicka, boom. You know, <coughs> subscribe with Twitch, uh, with Twitch Prime. Thank you. I'm a big fan of that. I don't know why my voice is so ah today other than, you know, this hand. Um, so, yeah. So, to sum up, there's lots of ways to reskin things. And reskinning is an easy way to add... Um, to add variety and a little bit of unknown to your games. And you've been seeing it all of your life. If you've gone through Target, why is there a Star Wars Monopoly, a Doctor Who Monopoly, um, what else, what else? A Rick and Morty Monopoly, a My Little Pony Monopoly. Um, why is there a Star Wars Clue, um, a Married with Children Clue, a Simpsons Clue, you know? It's all Clue. It's 
all Monopoly. <laughs> okay? But each one of those things is just a reskin. And some reskins comes with a little something extra to added flavor, but most of the time it's still just the plain old game mechanics with a new face. All right, and I'm a big fan of that because it opens up the door to people that really don't like the standard genres. You, you, you get what I mean on that? Like I said, um, I go on and off with fantasy. When it comes to my self-insertion, not a big fan of fantasy. When it comes to um, observing, like, you know, I tell people all the time, um, when I read fantasy novels, I don't say I'm this character, I'm that character. I'm playing God and I'm watching all this stuff go out. Like one of the reasons I love Game of Thrones, it's because it's full of a bunch of people that don't look like me being real stupid toward one another. And it doesn't affect me at all. And I'm cool with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm very cool with that. Um, now, moving on. Um, today, the game that I want to focus on specifically, and yeah, this one's for you, Boom, is Unstable Unicorns. Now this game, Unstable Unicorns, is a card game um, that's been put out recently. The Kickstarter came through and all that stuff, and it's about 15 bucks. And this game is actually not a terrible, terrible game. And when I say that, the game mechanics are simple. It is a group card flipper where it comes down to follow the game phase, follow the game phases, read the card, and have fun. Um, the art on these things are just so, it's so adorable. I mean, look at that. Oh, yeah, you've been in there. You know, essentially, um, at the beginning of the game, you draw a handful of cards and everyone gets a baby unicorn and they're trying to um, collect as many unicorns into their stable as possible. So it's pull the card, read the rules. You know, sometimes you can boost up your unicorns or deflate other people's unicorns. And at the end of the game, it comes down to who has the most unicorn points. And that's about it. Um, it doesn't take very long to learn. Um, what I did was I checked out a couple of videos and um, doo -doo -doo, and it was like, wow, this game is super simple, super simple. So the next time I'm in the area of my queen patron, I will be heading over to her place and or meeting her at a coffee shop or something and she will bring the baby unicorn and then boom, that's it. There we go. You know, and yeah. It's kind of my little pony, but my little unicorn. Um, these types of games are great. They are the new monopoly, if you will. Um, <laughs> it's a bit, yes, yes, it is a baby unicorn. Let me take a look here. Yeah, hey, boom, 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 boom. Um, yeah, of course, yes, it is. It's a baby unicorn and they're doing the Olaf voice. So that is a thing. <laughs> Welcome to the chat everybody by the way um, It has the feeling of my little pony. It's not necessarily my little pony, but it's got that feeling and These games like I said are great Because they're like the new monopoly, but they're much more portable, you know, you can fit this in a little bit of a backpack and um, You know the box in and of itself is only uh, I would say maybe seven inches by four inches by two inches thick so you know it'll fit in most big purses every single backpack or in my case saddlebags you know so it's an easy thing to sit down at a coffee shop with friends with um <clears throat> play a couple of rounds you know have fun with the thing laugh at the little unicorns and look at all the cute art um, some of the art being, oh my god, mustaches are so hot, and you get to see a little baby, um, unicorn with a goatee being like, hey, you know, I'm wearing a hat, and I got a goatee, because I'm a unicorn. Um, but all in all, the phases of the game are super simple. There's a draw phase, an action phase, <laughs> um, and when you have, um, when you have... Your draw phase, everybody draws a card. Um, 
there are certain cards that are like instant cards that you can play anytime or as a response to another card that someone else plays. Um, there are booster cards where you play on your turn to pump up a card and the booster cards and the deflation cards, they don't necessarily have to be played on your unicorns. And, um, you know, so you play these games, you can't, uh, you play these cards, you can cancel out the cards, put them in the discard pile and try and collect as many unicorns in your stable as you can um, until you get to a certain point cost and then the game is over. So really simple. All right. Um, feel free to email me if there are any questions so far. <laughs> but yeah, that is that is mainly the thing. Um, I would have made a cool, cute little um cute little animation but those take forever and i can't illustrate nor do i have enough money to pay for an illustrator so that is a thing um let's see there we go boom <laughs> boom boom and these card um again these card games really fun and for 15 dollars, this is a game um yes the negative bumps are what you can give your opponent okay because why why would you give your own unicorns like power downs and the question is there might be a game advantage to it um i did a lot of research on this game which is why i can explain it so simply but everything else comes out in gameplay and of course there are going to be questions when you're playing a game like well can i use this card at this time or can i play this at that point but the number one thing is when you look at your card and there is a bold print instant that is a card that you can play on anyone's turn especially in response to a card that they just played um and no you don't get to when you draw a card you have to wait until the next round before you can use it in magic the gathering we call that summoning sickness but um you know and that's just to keep the game balanced because there are some games where you draw it you play it and let's say you draw a card that says draw four other cards well you draw the card you put it down you draw four more cards if one of those say draw four cards you know all of a sudden you're holding the whole deck you win the game and everybody else that was playing didn't have any fun because they didn't really get a turn you know so um but yeah now <coughs> those are um those are some of the things that i kind of put in there so yeah those are you know that, that's what i gotta say on that one um shannon feel free to email or text or you know hit me up through deckers of the on the book or send me an instant message that's how dedicated i am to my patrons okay um if you guys got if if you have any questions about that you can pick up unstable unicorns um on amazon of course and yeah, here's some other pictures of the game in and of itself. And yes, there are expansion games. Oh, look at this. Ooh, Unstable Unicorn by Breaking Games. That That's what they are. And yeah, cute little baby unicorns with pacifiers. So if you like the cute, yeah, if you like being cute, then yeah, that's all you. And um, yeah that is number one thing but you can grab this on amazon and for those of you guys that just subscribed with your amazon account yeah you can pick it up amazon prime 20 bucks 20 bucks to your door there you go and the expansion packs are like 10 bucks so use your amazon prime pick it up for 20 bucks you'll have it by tomorrow you can have some friends over um <laughs> yes friendships have ended over games of uno as they have over games like Diplomacy and Game of Thrones, which we'll talk about at a different time. Um, but yeah, um, one of the things about this game is their learning curve is not as low as Cards Against Humanity. So this is not a game that you can learn and have a lot of fun with if there's drinking involved. Um, you need to pay attention for the first couple of games that everybody plays and then you can start being distracted but just two games two really quick games of this 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 you know one game to learn the rules one game to make sure that you got it and that would be the time to get competitive or drunk if you drink as you guys know i don't so yeah <clears throat> that's um that's what we got on that we got 10 minutes left 
So I already showed you guys some of the pictures. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys really quick about some of the miniatures that we have been making for our patrons. Okay, because this is cool. Um, we designed these miniatures, as you see, that is the miniature of the cinematic sorcerer. And um, yeah, it's a little me, you can paint me whatever. I only request that you keep my skin one or two deviations of my actual shade. But um, even down to the dreadlocks, which is cool, feel free to color them whatever color you want. And you will be mailed one of these at the $5 tier which means um, if any of my patrons are watching right now that are already in the $5 or higher tier, um, hit me up on the Patreon so that I can get your addresses so I can do all the shipping and stuff that I need on that, along with the back in the deck keychains. Um, I wanna end today's thing with a question for you guys. This is a really big thing. Um, with the keychains, I have the option of the keychains having our contact information the website the patreon all that other stuff do you guys think that we should do that or would it be tacky huh? i don't know i don't know just give it uh give it some thought and hit me up with an email on that particular um on that particular front and where would you where would you um hit an email with me well hang on real quick i gotta make sure that i can yes um there we go um yeah so if you guys would be so kind as to hit me up with an email um over at of course back in the deck at gmail.com um that's b-a-c-k-i-n <laughs> t-h-e-d-e-c-k at gmail.com because guess what yeah we are done for today this has been this has been a good day. This has been a good day so far. Um, we've got a couple of things going, and tomorrow we've got another show that's coming out. Um, <clears throat> and that show is The Hobby Hall. And this is the show where we start to teach people how to paint stuff and how to, how to make scenery and stuff out of whatever it is you can get your hands on just to make sure that all of those things are not unattainable. So we're gonna start with, you know, just making some fun little things that I've been checking out around um, around the internet and I'll show you guys how to do it and give you reference materials and all that jazz. But thank you guys for showing up with me today. This has been very cool. Thank you very much chat for being so active and so conversational this has been very cool let's take a look oh hey look at that yeah they're seriously there and yes more shows more shows more shows um that is what we're at so thank you guys for showing up and um let me know what you guys think let me know how your gaming stuff has gone just head on over to back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k -E -E at gmail.com you can also hit us up on youtube um you know hit us up on youtube like subscribe share get other people to subscribe on youtube trying to get that momentum up um <clears throat> follow us on social media on twitter you tag me in a twitter thing or you tag back in the deck in a twitter thing and i promise you we gonna be like what somebody tag? oh no you're trying to pick fight yeah there we go all right cool screw the strike sand effect <laughs> and um i'm kidding i don't get involved in any trolling um join us on deckers on the book talk to some other deckers if you guys really want to like check out some other stuff and other episodes of shows that we've done in the past head on over to soundcloud where you get all and i mean all of the audio that we put up there from seven years so the audio quality varies there's so much so much there and just download that stuff keep it for your stuff and um seriously it's it's really it, it, it's it's a really fun thing to do it helps us out it helps generate revenue so that i can hire assistants um, make sure that the equipment is all upkept and all those things but with that i'm gonna say thank you for showing up to the game gallery and if anyone tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth be it race religion creed gender identity sexual orientation your disability or your budget you just tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck this is solar 
Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, saying we'll see you guys next time on the Game Gallery.